and welcome to the debate on France 24. I'm Andrea Sankey in Paris. Tonight, in nations that vehemently protect freedom of speech, is there also an obligation to pay for the protection of those who brazenly criticize Islam? That's the question being asked of French citizens today. They're facing the prospect of an outspoken critic of Islam becoming a French citizen herself. The Somali-born former Dutch MP had been under Dutch protection until she left the Netherlands for the United States. Now she's hoping France will provide her security. Ayan Hersi Ali is asking for French citizenship, hoping to get the protection she needs. She's been living in constant fear since 2004, when she helped write the script for a movie by Dutch filmmaker Theo van Gogh, denouncing the treatment of women under Islam. Van Gogh was assassinated by an Islamic radical, who vowed she would be next. But that hasn't stopped her speaking her mind. Islam is an aggressive system that separates human beings from each other. Islam has a need to divide the world between good and evil, as do all religions for that matter. Born in Somalia in 1969, she applied for asylum in the Netherlands to escape what she said was a forced marriage. She became a citizen and ran for parliament. After the threat on her life, she received state protection. But two years later, she left the country, admitting she lied on her asylum application. She moved to the U.S., but the Dutch government refused to pay for her protection abroad as she was no longer an MP. European MPs are now lobbying for Brussels to foot the bill, and in France, a group of intellectuals are urging President Sarkozy to keep his election promises. I would like to tell all the children around the world and all threatened women, I want to tell them that it will be France's proud duty to be at their sides. Ayan Hersi Ali is hoping France will be at her side now. She received the Simone de Beauvoir Prize for the Freedom of Women in Paris Sunday night. Well, prizes aside, some say Ayan Hirsi Ali deserves no sympathy, much less taxpayer-funded security, because of her own extremism. She's called the Prophet Muhammad a pervert and a tyrant. She's described Islam as a, quote, backward culture and a new fascism. So should a democracy or democracies be obligated to protect her? That's one of the questions we'll debate here tonight. And joining me via satellite from Manchester, New Hampshire, Robert Spencer, a writer and director of jihadwatch.org. From New York, Irshad Manji, an author, producer, and reform-minded Muslim activist. From Washington, D.C., Abed Ayoub, legal advisor at the American Arab Anti-Discrimination Committee. And joining us on the phone from here in Paris, Emel Boubaker, who is research fellow and leader of the Islam and Europe program at the Center for European Policy Studies. Thanks all so much for joining us tonight. Amel, let me begin with you, and we'll begin with the fundamental question here. Should European democracies be obligated to pay for the protection of a woman like Ayan Hirsi Ali? Well, I can't answer this question as I'm not a policymaker myself, but uh, as a sociologist, um, the interesting question is, is this cause just or compatible with uh, European Islamic values? Actually, um, a huge majority of European Muslims are already convinced of uh, the necessity to address the question of forced marriage, of stoning, of, um, of condemning it. Uh, but actually, it's also interesting to... So in terms of freedom of speech, uh, the debates which are uh, raised by uh, Ayah Yoshinali are quite interesting for Europeanism and French Islam uh, more specifically. But in terms of um, racism, extremism, uh, it could be tough to have this kind of debate between mm, the huge majority of of Muslims in Europe and France who are in favor of human rights and, uh, and a, a character like Ayayush Nani. So you believe there is a great need for debate on specifically this, this issue here Absolutely. in France? Okay, let me ask Abed Ayoub. Well, well, let me go back to the fundamental question then with you. Do you think a democracy should be obligated to pay taxpayer fund the security of a woman like Ayan Hirsi Ali? Well, first things first is we do value our First Amendment rights uh, anywhere across the world, including here in the States. Um, an interesting piece brought up uh, at the beginning was whether she is she doing this, this is her own doing. She's saying these things on her own, um, which kind of gets me thinking. But at the end of the day, I feel it is, it is left up to debate. It should be left up to the French government to decide. But personally, I don't feel there would be anything wrong if they did flip the bill to protect her. However, a lot of her views are outside the box and are in no way in line with uh, 
the religion of Islam or Muslims in France. I mean, in your personal opinion, Abed, do you feel she's really insulted all Muslims in a sense? She hasn't just ad- agitated radical uh, Islamists. She's, she's hurt Muslims in general with her statements. She has, she has hurt Muslims in general uh, across the world. I mean, there's, there's billions of us. Um, but at the same time, it's a very interesting question, and I, I find this interesting, is should the government protect her while she's inciting and getting these Muslims upset? Which part of your population do you want to service to? Um, which is, it's, it makes for a very interesting debate. Okay, let me turn to New York now. Irshad Manji joins us. Irshad, I'll ask you the same question, but I'd like to point out just one additional thing. You being a, a passionate Muslim yourself, something uh, Ayan Hirsi Ali said is that uh, violence is inherent in Islam. It's a destructive, nihilistic cult of death that legitimizes murder. What do you make of a statement like that as a Muslim yourself? <laughs> and do you feel this is a woman who, by inducing this speech, deserves taxpayer protection? Look, Andrea, uh, yes, I'm a passionate Muslim, I'm a reform-minded Muslim, I'm a faithful Muslim, and it is precisely because I am secure in my faith that I don't feel in any way threatened by statements like that. Quite the opposite. I think it's an opportunity for people like perhaps Abed, certainly like me, to engage in what we've all agreed so far is necessary, which is uh, discussion and debate. And look, I'm also, in addition to being a faithful Muslim, I'm a senior fellow with the European Foundation for Democracy. And so it is from that perspective that I can confidently say any democracy that is worth its salt absolutely needs to find ways of protecting freedom of conscience, individual liberty, and pluralism of peaceful ideas. Somebody like Ayan Hirsi Ali, who is an ex-Muslim, she is an atheist, she has left Islam, but she nonetheless operates, you know, in a democracy, and she is not calling for violence or for the death even of fundamentalist Muslims. Her (laughs) words need not threaten anybody. And it is only those who are steeped in brittle and rigid dogma, rather than those who enjoy their faith, only those people will feel that she is a threat to their identity.